Well, howdy, everybody. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. So I'm working on a 50-year fence, repairing it. That's 1 20th of a thousand years, isn't it? Yeah, my math says if my math is right. 20th, 50th, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, you know, saving of, if I get another 50 years out of this fence, then it will be a fence that's uh, 1 tenth of a thousand years long. How about that? But uh, as I mentioned before, the couple of reasons, fencing is very expensive to fence this whole piece of property with hog wire would probably be $30,000. So uh, when I moved in, I split the cost of the fence with the previous owner of this property and they, we cut it down the middle. That was uh, seven or 8,000 my side, seven or 8,000 his, and that's only... 40% of my fence line so and that was several years ago now it'd be even worse anyway Nevertheless saving this whole fence is worthwhile. So, uh, you know, I've already got a video up or two of uh, clearing it and replacing posts Now I'm going to restretch old barbed wire and the thing about old barbed wire is you can't pull it tight, right? You could just get it comfortable I give the illusion to the cattle that you know they've got a wire there but if you do that times four it's a pretty good illusion let's take a look at what's going on here so it looks like it's four strand barbed wire it's still down in the ground some of it let's untangle it all and get it stretched out put it back in place <laughs> One. There's two. All right, and I cut you off already. I'm gonna cut you again. Don't I? The thing about lopping is, if you think you're done, you stick your head under there, and nope. Got one piece of wire that'll go all the way. One almost looks like the top strand. It's all broken, right? Everything's broken. I don't know what happened here. I would guess a bulldozer had gone through at some point in time or something like that. I truly doubt the cattle did all this damage. Well, that's not too bad. I found three strands. There's got to be a fourth one. Yeah, I see it down in the ground. Yeah. Probably been run over by a brush hog a time or two. Yeah, it's all that fourth strands way down in the ground. I'm going to have to walk that up. Before I go string pulling this super tight, my goal is to just get it all up and looking reasonable, respectable. See how I fiddled with that and it broke right off as soon as I touched it? It's just gonna fall apart, right? You gotta make sure you put these up right away before you lose them in the ground and then brush hog them up. On a serious note, get your, uh, if you're gonna work on old fence, Get your lock jaw shot every renewed every 10 years. Right? You don't want that old problem. All right, let me go down and figure out if I can find out where this bob wire is.
an amazing ranch hand plot twist. I mean, this is right out of Hollywood. Good writing here. The piece that I thought was the bottom because it was rusty was actually the top piece. So I untangled it down there about 300 feet. This piece must have broke early on and got in the ground right away. Anyway, now I can start tacking it on, pulling it tight a little bit. What I want to do is pull it tight enough that I could put a little loop around that end and uh, tie that off. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, this here is a wire stretcher. That chain part is long enough to go around something and come up and grab the bottom. This is the come along part. You open it up here and you stick the wire in those jaws and it grabs it and then you pull it all and um, away you go there you go see you put the wire in there and then you just crank it up oh, come on now all right then you ratchet the chain through it until it draws it tight. See the teeth moving back and forth there? So you can see you can ratchet through the chain and walk the train chain like like clickety clackety clickety clack. But that's for Philistines. I'm going to use a ranger, hook it up with uh, the wire, wire grip on the other end of the chain and just pull it and be done. Uh, otherwise I'd be stretching for forever. This is old fence. But I'm going to be careful because I don't want to break the strands. Right. Well, what I'm going to do is take my chain stretcher here. I've got it clamped onto this older wire. I'm hoping it's going to hold here. I'll bring around my four-wheeler into this spot, tie it off onto the bumper, and see if I can pull it a long ways. Because I don't know how loose this wire is all the way down. But if I could pop it all the way up, I'll, I'll mount it all the way up, and then I'll go down and do each one of these. Let's see how close we can get. Alrighty, y'all. Keep your eye on that. You see it right there? I'm going to back up. We'll see how, how tight I can make that. Now I'm not going to go crazy. I'll pull it and walk down, pull it and walk down. Alright. Old blazes. Mr. Curious, when I'm doing work, comes down, and if I scare him, off he goes. Oh, well, that's not half bad. I mean, it's not, you know, where I could play guitar on it. Not half bad. I got it tucked up on top of a couple of these posts. I'll loosen them up a little. Can't put nails in them. How far down did I pull that? Well, that's not half bad, is it? I can't even see the four wheeler from here. Oh, I need to pry that one out. It's stuck in that one. Yeah, here's where it all goes flopping again. All right, so I'm gonna nail it on down all the way to here. Pull each one of those, do every one of them, all the way to there. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I've got that four-wheeler holding it tight enough. Now I'm just gonna walk down and put staples in all of these. Any one that's too soft to hold a staple.
bought these at the local Apple Lumber Yard. You grab them by the pound and they throw them in a paper sack for you. Notice it's got little barbs in it. But once I get this up good enough, then I'll wrap it around this top and I'll close this up. Now the nice thing about redeeming an old wobbly fence is if some of the posts are a little crooked like that one, nobody cares. Because a brand new fence would be the one thing everybody would notice. I just want to get this done so that I can work on my house. All right, so all the tops are about the same. This is how I measure. I just kind of eyeball, you know, I want a hand grip down. That's all I want, a hand grip down. And then I'll pull them all to that height. Hand grip down. Alright, I've got the top wire one. It's okay. I'm going to go with it. So I'll back up, loosen it, and then I'll do the next wire down, which is this one. At least I got a little more, a little more extra that I can wrap a little bit when I'm done. That one's pretty bad. reasonably good all the way down. So let me walk all the way down and make sure. We've got a couple of nails I have to reach around the other side. So and I'll do that next row. Well normally I'd like to have a strand where I'd wrap it all the way around, but remember I didn't cut these. They came like this. So I have to make do. <laughs> the way it is the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to stretch it using the chain stretcher again a couple of times. All right. And hopefully finding a link I could squeeze this in. The ones that I can, I'll wrap around a couple of times. So that didn't do too bad. It pulled that okay, but not super tight. But uh, if I get lucky, I crimp the wire a little bit, walking it down without breaking it. I don't know. It's it's pretty rusty, everybody. I mean, this I might just have to be satisfied <laughs> with being just a little loose. That's not so bad because it is rusty. So the other ones are fine, but this first strand broke and then dropped in the ground. I thought it was the bottom strand. I didn't have any idea. I'll, I'll run another nail in like this to tighten it. And that, uh, you know, didn't do too bad. It's reasonably tight you know tight enough tight enough so it's up high enough i'm not worried about the cattle putting their necks on it i'm worried about the horses all right so then i'll do the rest of those and this little weird transitional spot will be fixed
Use this staple against the tangent to pull it a little bit tighter. There we go. Alright. And you can't make old barbed wire. Uh, like Jesus said, you can't right sew so new into the old and you rent you'll rip them both. You just have to treat the old like the old. Not go crazy on it. Just be satisfied. Just be satisfied you're saving money. All right, in the setting sun, I'm giving up. I'm all done. I stretched 100 feet of fence or so down to a broken spot where a tree had fallen in, and then I'll rebuild that. But that's it, uh, you gotta be careful fixing old fence. You can't go all crazy. Guys that pull a lot of tension in it will just break a lot of strands. Just respect it. Most cattle nowadays, we're not dealing with, you know, aurochs and things that are uh, wild, you know. We're, we're dealing with very domesticated animals. Even these Texas longhorns can be sweeties now. So uh, anyway, uh, just do what I did. And, you can use that chain come along, uh, those chains come along, they'll work just fine. But uh, honestly, if you've got a uh, four-wheeler like me, put it in low, back it up, brink, pull it just tight enough. You know, the wheels will give a little bit. Uh, it'll, it'll keep you from breaking a strand. And uh, nail that up, and then wherever you need to tighten it up, just take the end of your hammer and turn it a little bit and pull the wire or drive a nail in the tangent uh, around the log and you know bend it back onto the log it'll be just fine oh, like subscribe follow me i should always say that